Hey, this is Michael from NCY Store. I think we might figure out why the problem with our ignition coil, uh, it's actually not causing it uh, to turn over the engine. It's because actually it wasn't creating spark in the spark plug. And what we did was we tried to hook up a portable uh, battery to even boost it. We're just going by uh, hearsay, but we did some pretty good uh, smoking damage here because the bike we found wasn't properly grounded as well. So what we did was we hooked up a, a portable battery uh, charger to the positive of this right here that relays over to turn on the starter motor, the electric starter motor. And then we hooked up a ground here, but you look how it actually roasted the wires that was still anything that was mounted on the to the bike frame, which was this wire poor ground right here from the ignition coil. Now I just want to share with you also what we found out was um, we wired it incorrectly based on the same Zenon scooter model that actually had the um, pickup coil wire yellow and black because it was actually on the first slot. So I'm going to explain to you what the CDI uh, looks like. Uh, how the wirings are in the CDI so you'll know where is the pickup coil wire and not guess it by any kind of color code Even though they're, they're the same Zenon scooter. It was actually different for a friend of mine's uh, Zenon scooter His pickup coil wire uh, was the color here as you can see here behind my finger um, In front of my finger here. It's the yellow and black wire But that was actually on the second slot your pickup coil is always going to be if your CDI box is uh, facing let's just say up for, or it could be in the side like this, but let's just tilt it upward, okay? Uh, your first slot here, it's, this is how it's counted. The first slot is right here where my uh, finger is right here pointing. It's gonna be the black wire for me. Just for me, okay? I just wanna say this for me because there might be different for you because Chinese uh, manufacturers are notorious for just putting whatever colors wires available. It's up to you to actually know where um, the standards are. So the first slot is pretty much your uh, pickup wire, your trigger pickup wire. And then the second slot is pretty much for your uh, direct ignition coil. And that's why you notice here on mine is yellow and black. And it matches this one uh, wire that goes into my direct ignition coil. Uh, it's also yellow and black because that's where it actually connected to. And then also your um, uh, third and fourth one on a, a DC, it's actually just ground. Uh, if AC might have two of them, they're both the same ground. I'm not sure why they created third and fourth one. It just like makes a little more extra wiring. But those are pretty much your negative where your negative um, lead should be connected. And then now on the fifth one, this could be your positive switch battery on your DC. It's just switch, okay? Not the positive uh, battery wire itself. This is just your positive switch. Now on AC, uh, this could be pretty much your uh, kill switch, they call it, the number fifth one, okay? So fifth is very much here on the top where mine, as you can see, is, is uh, empty. And then on the last one here, the sixth one here, is the pretty much on your DC, this is your positive. Even though it's black color, it's actually your positive. So we wired it correctly, our negative, and positive wire on the DC CDI, we wired it on the benching correctly. So we put our black wire with the green one here, even though, you know, most time black is in the cane for um, negative, but that's fine because it's still green. So it's ground, ground and negative are pretty much almost, if anything, the same. So we put our negative uh, benching wire here. Let me go and show you with the benching wire here. So you have three benching wires uh, pretty much coming up from your CDI. So. The, the black wire here, this is gonna be your negative or ground wire. So you actually either put it here on the third or fourth, just either one of them, they have ground. So you can actually put it here on the, I would just go with the fourth one, just tap into whatever wires that's coming out to your harness. So this will be pretty much gonna be for your benching. So the black one will go to the green one, which we did correctly. And then on your positive DC on your benching one, the red wire it's actually going to go here to this remember the sixth one is positive so again it's going to go from one two next one above it let me see if i get something better point here i'll use my probe instead that way it won't confuse you okay so here we go this is going to be your number one okay one slot second slot right there third fourth fifth the empty one and then six so the first one again, it's gonna be pretty much for your pickup coil. This is very important. This is where your blue wire from your benching needs to tap into, even for the AC one. The first wire on the harness, if it's facing this way, uh, either way, just remember that in the very corner there, it's gonna be pretty much for your pickup coil wire right there. Okay, and the second one is gonna be pretty much for your ignition coil. Um, you can see here how it matches my direct ignition coil, which is normally here. This right here would, if it was mounted to this thing right here, 
you can see that this would have been slotted right into my direct ignition coil going to the CDI it's pretty much gonna be my second one so that would be right there and then your third and fourth one on the AC or DC it's gonna be pretty much your ground and a, uh, and a DC one you can see is empty and then if you has also on the DC some will have a positive DC switch to turn it on if you have an AC this will be actually a kill switch right here so um, that one won't be tapped into with the benching, but this one will be right here. This is going to be your positive battery. Um, your AC CDI actually gets it from the stator, while your DC gets it from the battery itself, the source. So that's why the difference between when things are made for a, a DC or CDI ignition fire, that's why because the wire configurations are slightly different, but they're not much. Uh, again, keep in mind, just note that where the positive is, is actually on the sixth slot. And then on their pickup coil is always going to be in your first one. And then your ground will probably be in the third or fourth one. They're both might be actually ground. So those two right there, if you just keep in mind, you'll you'll have no problem wiring the benching. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to go ahead and um, pretty much route our blue wire. And back to this hidden wire here. I just want to show you where I tucked it at because I didn't think that was the pickup coil wire because we thought that was just going to be the, the trigger wire. But we should have thought about it because it was different color than this uh, coil wire here because we thought that was just your uh, coil wire so we kind of hit it in there God, put it in there pretty good I don't even know which direction it's supposed to come out uh, I'm pulling from one end to another end there we go everything's gonna be a little stiffer because it's cold so let me go ahead and open this real quick and let me get the pliers here kind of yank it here nice and tight in there huh might be this is the end wow it's really tight in there oh there we go stiff it's just really stiff it's uh pretty good uh probably around 50 50 below for california that's like freezing cold so there it goes this is actually your pickup coil and that's the reason why we had the problem with the engine not turning over and uh like I said, the direct ignition coil or is built into the Banjing one and it never would have fired. But again and again, we have to actually ground the bike properly because again, initially what happened was you could see here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a ground wire. How you can make a ground wire is most of the time you can see a, there's a ground wire that goes to the valve cover. Ours never had one because we rebuilt this engine. So what we're going to do is actually um, make our own ground wire. We're just going to take a, a negative from the battery terminal, uh, a gauge wire. You know a good size one you know and then bring it down to the valve cover so what we decide to do is just use our banjing one if you notice right here this is our banjing one it's a nice gauge wire and we're just going to go and cut it in half and uh, this slot right here is too small for the valve cover or the battery terminal so we won't be able to use this section of it but we will be able to use this one this actually fits perfectly the screw on the battery here we're going to loop it the other way so it's kind of u-shaped downward like this which is perfect and um, we're gonna go and make the other end also bigger so we can actually fit it into our valve cover we're gonna put it right here in this corner right here that right there so we're gonna mount it and we just need a little bit loop what's great about the scooter I know is that as most batteries are actually on the floor level which is kind of convenient going back and forth up like this but I like this one because it's like a bench height you can actually troubleshoot and work on the scooter much more easier because the battery is just so here and it keeps it away from a little bit in the bottom area too. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this in half uh, with our splicer tool here. So let me go ahead and cut this real quick here. Poop, cut, how about that, huh? How easy is that? I cut it actually prior already. So we're gonna go ahead and take about only half and I'm gonna show you the distance here. We're gonna put it in the slot here. See how it's gonna come up like that, coming up. And then we're going to mount it right there. We're going to it to the battery terminal. And then if you lose here, it's just enough distance there. It kind of loops, loops where the seat is. And it's gonna, we're going to make our terminal here. And then we're going to mount it. So let's go and make our terminal. And you don't need any solder for this unless you really want a little bit more extra security. I just go ahead and just, you know, do the best you can with what you have. So here we go. We're going to have to peel some insulation off because it's a little too much more than we need. 
And don't worry, it says black right now, but we could probably go ahead and put like a black insulator if we need to. And we'll make it um, work in there. Very thick, good, 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 good thick covering though. Yeah, Benjing makes some really good uh, uh, products. Their wiring and everything is just thick. Their CDI is nice too. All the wiring came from the CDI. It's, it's a very thicker, thicker wire than the normal, you know, like the little headlights and stuff. So it has to be because it's dealing with a lot of uh, power sensitive stuff. Okay, so here we go. I'm kind of trying to. Okay, so that's good enough. So let's see if we can fit insulation in there. We might be able to fit over. Let's see. Let's see if we can find a bigger insulation. Uh, bigger than this one. I don't think so. I think this might be the only one we have. Maybe, maybe this one? Or even try to use black if possible. Yeah, this might be just the only bit of insulation we have. Then we can bring it back over if we need to. All right, there we go. Or sort of. All right, we'll just don't worry about it. We tried to fit in there. Okay, so now we're gonna go and get a tip. Let's see which one that, oh, actually there's one right here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and slide the tip all the way in. Oh, first of all, we gotta splice it. What am I doing? I'm way ahead of myself. You can see, if you ever use a spicer tool before, there's an open in here you can just grip and pull out. Okay, so we're gonna do that. We don't need that much. We're gonna try to keep as much insulation as possible. Okay, so here we go. We gripped it. Okay, just go and smash it. This is just made for this gauge wire, I think. Okay. Might sometime have to go all the way the other round too. 360 degree coverage. Okay. Give it a good yank. Very thick wire. Oh, wow. All right, so we smashed as much as we can. Uh, we're not smashing it to uh, compress or anything. We're smashing it to rip it. That seems like, yeah, we don't want to damage the threads or anything. We want to get the most of it out cleanly. See, I'm gripping it. Well, it's cold. Very hard to work with. Everything is cold. So it's much more contracting. Whoa. Shouldn't have to take this. Um, but this is a gauge wire there. It's heavy. There we go. We got some exposed area there. Peel it back. Uh, we probably want to get a little bit more. So this is it. Twirl it. Get a good connection there because this is going to be our, our ground wire. You know, electricity likes to take the shortest distance, so you want to protect your um, components. You want to make sure it's properly grounded so it can route back to its uh, source, earth. There we go. Let's see. Okay, when we crimp it, try to get the insulation there as well. I have to hold this still. Get a good contact. You want to twist a little bit with your fingers. See what I'm doing? Oh yeah, this is this is so thick that um, even this little small hole might be a problem fitting it in there. But we'll see. See what we can do. Looks like it's trying to fit some of it anyway. But we gotta get the majority of it in there. Has to go in there in bulk. All right. Okay. There we go. It's coming out the other end beautifully. You can see there. Almost didn't want to come out, but we're gonna go a little bit more. We get a towel. It's getting a little bit hard on my finger. 
Okay. The tighter it is, the better because once it smashes in there, we're golden. So you can hardly see any more of a red wire exposed because the black insulation on it. It worked. All right. Yeah, we want to bring it in there as much as possible before we crimp down. It just barely flushes it. Okay. All right, so this is going to be facing this way. And this is going to be going toward the valve cover. I almost want to even direct it. So this is going this way. So we're going to go ahead and try. See here, my screen's almost fogging up. Let me clear it out because the cold moist. Okay, let me go and try to kind of get an idea okay, how we want to turn this in. So you might want to... So this is going to be hooked on like this. Okay, so we're going to make sure the screws has room to flush itself. This might work just as fine right there. Okay, so you can see here I flushed as much as I can. Didn't get a chance to pull all the way out. Maybe I can force a little bit more with the with my screwdriver in here. Give it a little bit more pressure. All right, so that's it. We're gonna go ahead, make sure it's gonna look good. There we go, we got that in now. And we're gonna break it in there. I put the beads right here. You know, a lot of people do it a little bit differently. But I try to get the teeth, open it up as much as I can here. I try to get the teeth to clamp down on the open slit there where this is right here that way it digs into it okay so I'm gonna go ahead now I can't even close this <laughs> everything's just stiff in the morning including myself okay here we go not yet Supposed to be pretty heavy duty like this, so you can actually really teeth into it. Okay, this looks like it's got good teeth in there, right there. Okay, so you can see me go ahead and smash it in here. One, two, three. All right. Oh wow, there you go. Oh, smash, smashed. <clears throat> but yep. See how the teeth digs in? It's not the prettiest though. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if we can still try fit our heat shrink. And we're going to peel back some of that old insulation. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's so smashed in there. So there you go. You want to give it a good pull. Don't be afraid you're going to take it off. You'd rather know that it's loose now than when it's actually on there. Okay. All right, so let's see if we can get the insulation. I know, not the prettiest uh, crimp job, but uh, let's see. Let's see if I can pull it off. Yeah, it's pretty good in there. Pretty tight. Okay, let's see if we can get some insulation in there. This one's gonna be, might be a little harder to get into it. We could probably peel the same insulation off. Look like it's just usually we can put it over it, but this one's so thick that it has nowhere to go. Yeah, I'm mutilating this thing right here. All right, there we go. Press a little bit more on the edge here. You can see here, and try and bring it around a little bit. Nice, there you go. Looks a little bit much better, right? Much better than it was before. 
All right, trick is to get over. Once we're over, we should be golden, but a few of these don't want to cooperate with us. There we go. Try to get over the second, you know, the second sleeve too, if possible. It's going to be a little bit harder to do, but we might be able to. I'm going to try fold it, this little insulation in. See that? I'm trying to fold it in. Try at least try to sh shrink it to itself. That way I can put this insulation all, all the way through it. <laughs> Looks like it's coming. Okay. <sighs> All right, there we go. This ground wire is well deserved now. Okay, what we're gonna do is try to pull it. I don't want to pull it with a plier, it might just rip it. Okay, so we're just trying to keep feeding it. We're almost there. We got most of the lid out of here this way. We're trying to try. All right, so we can actually, as long as it doesn't cover the hole. Okay, there we go. We can actually just start heat shrinking it. Let me get a little bit more. I think this is perfect right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and all you need is just get a cigarette lighter. This one's cigarette lighter was more anxious to come out here and do it. Yeah, I get it. Everything is cold. <laughs> Oh, sorry. You didn't see it. That, that's all you want. Plastic on plastic. We'll see how that does. Mainly just wanted to make sure this is shrinks really nicely. Cause it any kind of moisture for not going in, possibly. That's the purpose of heat shrink to avoid duct tape. I think that's it. The rubber ain't gonna melt. Alright, so there we go. We just made our nice ground contact, so we're gonna go ahead and start assembling our battery here. And the battery is nice. We're gonna put the cushion on the bottom. And again, the battery register at a pretty good uh, voltage. And it's so light. Careful, it might just slide right off. Make sure it hooks onto something like right there or something. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the cushion into our battery. And we're gonna wire up our leads and everything. So these were my cushion of choice. There's certain different sizes. I believe this one will go to the bottom. And these two are for the sides. You see here, we make a lid for it. Again, I don't use the, I don't peel off the Velcro yet because I think we're gonna be having to take the battery out in and out from time to time. Okay. So there we go. Awesome. Get our battery, the negative terminal goes this way. Wanna make sure we can fit it properly. There we go. See, everything's like snug. That's what we want. We don't want the battery to be moving when the uh, the bikes isn't rattling. Okay, so we're gonna bring our terminal here. Our negative. You can see I did this one too, but the yellow is almost exposed. And this was actually uh, again the same yellow lid, but I was able to fit the insulate. I was able to fit the insulation. You can see right through it. See there. Okay. So we're gonna bring this right here that we just made our ground wire. We're eventually going to mount it here, but for deal, let's just go and mount everything first to the battery. Bring the rubber through it. All right, the rubber's through it now. Okay, so we'll put this one first, I guess, or maybe we can put the the top one. We'll see. I think we think we can we we don't have to use both of these, so we're probably going to have to remove the battery. 
probably gonna have to remove this battery bad boy here, this insulation. So we'll find out first when we mount it. Okay, there should be a washer in the terminal already. What I found out to help me was a Phillips before I used the socket to drive it in. Because the Phillips, you can actually see if it's actually in the threads uh, groove before you start driving in. Okay, okay, we need the washer on top. Because that's what we want. Look at that. So sticky. Uh, that's from dielectric di grease. Okay, so let's go and take our proper socket and make sure we're ready to secure a battery. This is too small. It's a 10 millimeter socket, I believe. Let's go and find that. Oh, want to make sure. Put it in there. Yeah, it's turning. Okay, so let's turn this one off also. Get ready to insert the battery. Probably do it by hand too. We'll get this ready though. Okay. So we're gonna go and put our battery. It's always fun to do, huh? On camera. <laughs> there we go. This is it. We'll go, we'll put the battery on the bottom. And then we'll put this one next, I guess. That way, because we can use the whole top insulation on there. So let me go ahead and try to put this where you can see it still but at the same time I have to work with both hands but a little bit harder to do without cool all right here we go I'm gonna bring my chair in the other end okay, we'll get the camera view okay I was gonna take a Phillips use my extended finger there, my index. Okay, here we go. All right, so what we're thinking of doing is putting the battery first. We might have to cut the other thing out, which is fine. We'll put this second on top. So first on top, you could say. I'm thinking of going like that way, let's see. Cause we're gonna need to flex and bend it eventually. Like this is flexing and bending for us. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. All right, so there we go. So we could probably do it this way, or we could put this underneath and get it over with, and still bring this on top somehow, which we'll have to do. And I think still is still possible. So all these stay right there. See that? I'm thinking of doing it this way, or maybe put this one on the bottom. Either way, this one has to curve still, no matter what. So, do it, could I bend it like this, maybe, and bring it in more like that? Maybe collapse it together, create a nice little, you know, stack on top of each other like this, more parallel. I think I could do that, maybe force the lead to bend, let's say. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in here. It's barely made it, but now this is where I take the my screwdriver almost like a dagger and force it in the terminal. Okay. I think it's okay. Okay, the screws is going in. I'm gonna try to keep this on top. Okay, there we go. Keep it on top, let it just bend as it's going in. Okay, it looks good. We might have to again cut one of the rubber boots off, which we can do that, no problem. We brought it out here already, so we'll, we'll cover it. The top one boot will can stay on top. This is looking really good. We'll bring this rubber boot here and hopefully it'll kind of let us just come on top. No, this won't let us on top either. Actually, you know what? We can turn this a little bit to the side 
which is fine now because we just want to get a shape of it, but we can turn it to the side. There we go. There we go, and then bring the rubber boot over. Well, first of all, we gotta secure that terminal. So we can't do it with a Phillips anymore. So we're gonna have to do it with a wrench. Righty tighty. Perfect. Oh yeah, it's properly connected now. The negative anyway. Oh, we got one more negative. Uh, this wire here. I'm supposed to loop it back underneath. So guys, so we gotta take everything back off. All right. This is gonna be fun, huh? Having to recharge this, taking all the terminal back off. That's okay. You do it right the first time. It's gonna save you the, a lot of time. So let's go and take this Phillips back. Actually, we probably can't remove it a Phillips because it's too strong still. There we go. So, alright, we'll squeeze that guy in there. We'll be done soon. Yeah, this is probably the part where I don't really show too much yet of the details. I mean, I'm sure you can, you know, screw a battery on. That's not a big deal. But I just want to share with you my event. Okay, so we'll bring this underneath or over. It doesn't really matter which one, but we just got to make sure it gets in there. So this is good that actually the thread's kind of forced. So, so we got three wires going. There we go. We'll turn it around since we nail it in first. All right, a little bit few twists and turns. There we go. We'll turn it around. We'll try it. Do much we can with the fillet before we see that the fillet might be slipping. Okay, slipping. Okay, we'll go back with the socket. Righty tidy. Well, I'm gonna. I'm supporting with my thumb here. I don't want the battery terminal to twist off or anything. Just kind of getting a feel of how much pressure is going on. There we go. There we go. That's good enough. Awesome. So we got that there. Make sure it's nicely looped back out here. Okay, our goal was to actually get the boot on there. So let's see if we can still do that. This boot might need a little bit customizing, but what we do is I'm not sure we can just drag it with a hook or something. Probably pull it at least with a plier. 